It is my favourite day of the week that starts in W, my dudes. And you know what that means, it is time once again to revisit Mistletoe Peak for another incredibly festive episode. Now now we're actually in December. This is I feel like this is a significant date. You know, we started building a Christmas park in November, but now we're in December. It's less weird. Although I have I think I'm going to listen to what a lot of people commented in that I think one of the criticisms justified criticisms I would say for last week's episode was the fact that I did try and cram in too much footage into too short amount of time because I was under the pressure trying to get this out before Christmas day and a lot of people were quite positive saying no I'd, it's, I'd rather have it just be a winter themed park that gets completed after Christmas itself uh, and see you know the episodes be somewhat coherent rather than just 40 minutes of extremely <laughs> sped up footage where it's really hard to keep track of what's going on so going forward this is now a winter park kind of a shame I went with mistletoe in the name but to be fair mistletoe is not an exclusively christmas thing there is obviously the matter of lots of christmas decoration and a giant christmas tree in the middle of the park but uh, let's just skip over that minor detail and see the first guests arriving and there they are that entire train load of people only a handful got off the train because you know i mentioned that i did discover a flaw with my brilliant my otherwise flawless system has one giant flaw in that guests don't actually get off the train at the right stop. They'll just go round and round on the underground train until they get bored, they can get off and go home. They don't actually visit the main park itself. So that was kind of a bummer. I might just leave it as is because as I mentioned last episode, the park is completely broken anyway. None of the paths work, so it doesn't really matter. If anything, it's probably a good thing. But, you know, that kind of sucked that it didn't work. And to be fair, I, I did mention this in a Planet Coaster Discord server. I was like, if I just... Am I the only one that's ever come up with this idea? Because this is great. And everyone was like, no, nah, it has been attempted. Attempted being the key word there. And I'm like, oh, I probably should have uh, t uh, researched this concept before going full steam ahead with it. Pun intended there, you know, with the steam train. So, uh... As you can see, in this episode, I have now finished constructing a roller coaster. That was my fact. This is Mark's. The very first time I ever build a roller coaster using the 4 meter smoothing technique. So, you may notice it's not a very smooth ride. That's because we're going to be doing the uh, the grapefruit technique. Everyone said, Matt, you've been bamboozled. Like, because grapefruit technique has another meaning. Well, I'm like, I thought that was the joke. With the technique being called the grapefruit technique. Because that was, that was the funny in it. I uh, don't know. Maybe it isn't. But the way it works is you build the uh, the roller coaster out of the four meter pieces, i.e. the shortest pieces you can. Select four pieces, smooth, then kind of shift one along so the next four, smooth. As you can see what I'm doing on screen. And you do that eight times. I think I did like maybe six or seven times for this roller coaster, but given that it's a very simplistic layout, it was pretty easy to smooth actually. And we ended up with a pretty smooth ride, and obviously I think some ride types uh, you, they smooth easier than others. It's kind of planet coaster is a bit weird. Like you end up with smoother right. If you want to build like an inverted coaster, for example. And by the way, this was a commenter on my one of my Neptune Park videos. It's on with this, so thank you, whoever you are. I've forgotten your name now. But uh, if you build an inverted coaster using a flying coaster and then just change the cars at the end, the flying coaster's track is way smoother. So it actually makes more sense to build it as a flying coaster and then just change the cars at the end. Kind of weird, I know. Anyway, there's the general layout of this coaster. Nothing spectacular, and it's, you know, the famous Christmas dragon. That <laughs> There's no real... I guess it's like a... I guess it's like a Christmas dragon themed ride, because there aren't really any other themed roller coasters. I mean, there's the giant duck, which isn't that Christmassy. But there is... I did discover actually one, potentially, Christmas themed ride. And by ride, I mean roller coaster, right? There are literally... Christmas rides in this park, and we will get to those in future episodes. The only Christmas themed coaster I could find, that I could think of really, was the Hop the Gaps type ride, which is like the side friction wooden coaster. The, uh, it's based on Leap the Dips. All the cars are like individual, if you paint them red, they look like little Santa sleighs, so that's going to be the other roller coaster that I built in this park. I don't think I've built any other roller coasters so far. But uh, for this one, I'm like, let's put a modern steel one, and the junior coaster just seemed like the most appropriate one for a family-oriented ride. And, you know, all the things in this park are going to be fairly small scale in terms of the actual ride, because we've got all the, uh, the Christmas village and architecture and all that to kind of, you know, do all the wow factoring 
stuff for us. I think, uh, you know, having a quaint little Christmas village might look juxtaposed next to a giant steel giga coaster. So yeah, everything's going to be quite small. Nothing's going to be really... Nothing's gonna, the rule I set was nothing is taller than the Ferris wheel. That's why the Ferris wheel is kind of on top of that hill to give me a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, but generally all the rides will not be taller than the, the, uh, the top of the Ferris wheel is the rule I went with with this park. And as you can see, the station is nearly complete. Don't know why I've gone a bit Bear grills. <laughs> My terrible Bear grills voice. Um, yeah, nothing too special. Fairly just a simplistic boxy building that kind of mimics the architectural style of the rest of the park. Whilst also, you know, being its own little thing. Generally, you just cover everything in very ornate wooden pieces and those arches with the stone circle pieces paint it sort of cream and brown and that's basically how you mimic the style of the other buildings those uh lights really sell it i think and then couldn't really think of a good way of doing half walls here so i used the fancy planet coaster fencing and just used that to frame off the edges of the platform and i was really happy this is actually one of the few planet coaster glitches that i really like and i have no idea how to emulate it you can see i managed to get rid of the really ugly stock fencing <laughs> on the uh on the station here because normally the stations in Planet Coaster, you've got to have the black railings. You can't just delete them like you can with the supports and build your own, which I wish. That's one thing I really would like to see in Planet Coaster. Like, it's not very high up on my list of priorities, given there are some very much far greater glaring issues with this game. Admittedly, there aren't that many, right? But the ones that do exist, you're just like, dude, just please just fix the pass. Is what I'm trying to say here, Frontier. I know you don't watch this series, but I'm hoping I'm going to use the power of thought what's it called what was that fad that happened a few years ago with the secret for law of attraction i'm going to use that and i'm going to wish upon a christmas star for mr so peak for you to maybe fix the paths one day probably not so uh, yeah we've got the basic station building done i didn't really want to go too overboard with making this really tall structure a la uh silverettes <laughs> Christmas roller coaster. I'm not going to bother trying to match that guy's building style. We'll just go with anything else. So I, uh, went with, I thought I'd go for the big steep triangle roofs like the uh, the rest of the park. But I thought, nah, let's go with something a little bit different because I think they look a little bit too narrow to look good. And it also looks the same as the toilet block. So maybe we shouldn't do that. So I built a small raised section just here. And then in a second, you'll see I added like the uh, the wider. There you go. The, uh, the other fairy tale roof kind, this sort of wide one. I thought it looked quite nice. Bit more, um, bit more tricky to get the lights in because obviously it has a bit more of an ornate rim, so you have to be a bit more careful when placing the fairy lights to make sure they follow the line of the building all okay. But ultimately, a few guys won't take very long because I speed up this footage like twelve times. But uh, even in real time, it doesn't. It didn't take too long to be honest. And there is that. Then we can just duplicate it around to do the back, and then we'll just manually do the other side. And then flip that around so we can do the back as well. Usually in Planet Coaster, when you're doing symmetrical structures at least, just build one side and flip it around and that's how you do the other. And that's how I can do these really ornate station buildings relatively quickly, as you may have seen. You just build one, one meter wide section, then just paste it around the entire structure to do the rest of it. And there we go. And then I kind of had my hands forced here because uh, I've got that bit of track going over the station, so I kind of had to do a flat roof here. And then I tried to kind of incorporate some custom supports for the bit of track that goes over the station that kind of fits with the rest of the architectural style. So I initially went with a balcony piece, which looked a bit naff, but then I found this wooden sign actually makes a kind of nice uh, support. Obviously, the support itself wouldn't be made of wood. It would just be like steel that's been encased in that wooden structure to make it look nicer. And then for the inside, I went with these little chandeliers just because they look nice. And the chandeliers have this big chain that holds them up, but luckily the length of the chain was still obscured by that wooden sign, so it worked out pretty well in the end. And obviously the chain on the other light is just going to go straight up into that roof, so you wouldn't see it sticking out the top anyway. And then I was trying to come up with a nice sort of way of extending this door out, and then I decided just to paste the door a bunch of times and we can get the depth that way. And then we just comes to a... I'm going to skip through a lot of the path building, actually, because a lot of it was me trying to figure out how to get the path underneath this bit of track. So I did lots of playing around with terrain and stuff until I eventually just gave up because it all looked terrible. So I just placed the path, then I built the track around the path because at the end of the day, we don't have to do that much raising of the track height in order to clear that path. Bit's a bit low there. I did use the Bowman, and I was like, okay, we are still a bit close to the track for comfort, so let's just add another add a bit more height to it before we can call this finished. Then we can just do a little bit more four meter technique, grapefruit technique, whatever it's called, smoothing. And that's pretty much the ride finished. We need to do a little bit of theming around the queue, obviously. Um, but for all intents and purposes, we're pretty much closing in on the end, actually. I, said, oh, I, I tell a lie. <laughs> Some of that pathway 
ended up being very sort of jagged and rough against the terrain, so I did a bit more. Deleted it, smoothed out the land, and then replaced it. So yeah, now it just comes to theming the actual pathway itself, now that's all built, so one of the easy things to do in this, this park is just placing the snowy trees. There's only two snowy trees in this game, so you don't have to spend too long choosing between different types of foliage because you only have a choice of two. And then I used the little small snow rocks to make a kind of igloo archway to mark the entrance of this ride. And I think it ended up coming out pretty well. And it's quite an easy structure to build. Obviously, it's meant to look artificial. Obviously, it clearly is synthetic. Um, did I say artificial? I meant natural. <laughs> it's, it was meant to look natural, but obviously it's artificial. But... At the same time, you can be as rough as you want, because it, it, it could just be like a cave entrance. Don't really know. I can't remember what my original thought was. Um, I kind of just moved on mentally whilst I was still talking. <laughs> and then we can just fence off this bit. Some people like building like really high fencing. I don't know. I've never really had a problem with pace placing like waist high fencing because a lot of real theme parks you could easily vault over fences leading into like the out of bounds areas around roller coasters if you wanted to because I think it's very obvious that A you're not supposed to be there and B it's pretty dangerous getting too close to a roller coaster so most people would have some degree of some sense of self-preservation and choose not to do that so that's that so yeah I, I did end up deleting some of these snow rocks by the exit but you know, it was it was fine. So again, using the little archer just to get the uh, the height of this sign at an appropriate level, and that's uh, well, that's it. That's the exit path. <laughs> but I don't know if it's been in the video yet, actually. But I ended up calling this ride Helix. I don't know though if I really like that name all that much. So if you guys have any suggestions below of what to rename this ride, I am open to suggestions, especially ones that might incorporate some kind of winter or Christmas theme into either the Wendigo style of car or the little dragon car that you can get for the Junior Coaster and Planet Coaster. Something like that that you could theme, like maybe, I don't know, I thought about Albie the Christmas Dragon <laughs> or something like that. Uh, but I mean if you guys have like any groundbreaking ideas then do let me know that that was the other car type just there the little Wendigo one you can um, you guys can pause the video that, at that specific point if you want if you really care that much but I, I, I don't know I just called it helix because after the first drop the ride goes into like a helix and then the rest of the ride is fairly gentle with lots of big uh, t turns I was about to say corners then said turns and then I said corners halfway through so I kind of said Torners, or whatever it was, and then I stumbled, and it was all, it was a real disaster. And I'm not going back and reading this commentary because that's not how we do things in Neptune and Mistletoe <laughs> So yeah, just um, completing off this square. I wasn't, I was for a while. I was kind of toying with what to do with this big little square, uh, in this part of the park. We kind of got this big sort of, I don't know, dead end of a path, and I was playing around with things to put there. We will we'll get there, it will be filled out, and I am very, very happy with how that area of the park turned out, actually. But for right now, it's empty, and at this point, like, past Matt, as he was recording this video, wasn't sure either. So I just put fencing all the way around the edge of this roller coaster. And then we can obviously light up the pathway, because again, this park is best appreciated at night, given all the other lighting features of it. And then we can just light up the helix itself, currently the ride namesake, but certainly not its final name. And then I added like a, a Christmas tree pile, a piece of scenery so that the helix can go around. Here's a little, oh, I actually changed it to the Wendigo car. This is how, this is how familiar I am with my own bloody series, right? I can't remember which, which car I use. There will be a POV at the end of the video, but now we must get to Mistletoe B B Castle. I didn't just come up with the name of this building right now, literally on the spot. But of course, we have Mistletoe Peak and we have the cable cars going up to it. Where are the cable cars going? Well, now we know the answer. To Mistletoe Mount Peak St. St. Peak St. Michael. I don't know. I based this building on uh, the building St. Michael's Mount, which is in Cornwall. So a lot of people are familiar with the French island Mont St. Michael or Mont St. Michel. I don't know. What I, I feel like whatever I'm going to say, people are going to tell me I got it wrong. Bloody French, am I right? No, I don't, didn't mean that. Please, I, I apologise profusely. But either way, it's it's based on St. Michael's Mount, and St. Michael's Mount is, like, twinned with Mont St. Michael, or at least it was when it was first built. It was, like, or maybe not when it was first, first built, but very early on in its kind of life, it was, like, twinned and associated with the monastery of Mont St. Michael, and then it they kind of separated, and I don't know what how they stand now. Maybe they've made up. Who knows? I didn't really research it that much. I just went to St. Michael's Mount as a child, and so I, that's what I kind of based this muse on. The really, I mean, this this building is only very roughly based on it. It's not. I didn't really follow too much architectural style, but Mont St. Michael's Mount. 
I need to slow down, don't I? <laughs> so Marco's Mount is a place in Cornwall. It's like a church on top of a mountain. Not a mountain. A mount, probably. Not quite big enough to be a mountain. Or like an island in the middle of the sea. And this is obviously a mount in... I don't really know how what, what, what the difference between a mount and a mountain is. But either way, we're on top of a big sloped area that's quite difficult to access. Let's base the style of this building on a building that is also at the top of a big steep hill that's difficult to access. Interestingly, actually, St. Michael's Mount, it has a road going to it, but at high tide, the road is obviously underwater, so you can only go there at low tide, or you can get a boat, I guess. <laughs> you can only drive there at low tide, or you can walk there at low tide. Interesting place. If you're in Cornwall, I recommend it. Um, but yeah, that's what I based this building on. So this is like the tradi the old traditional building, I guess, like maybe once a year. The pilgrims would... I don't know which pilgrims, just the pilgrims. The pilgrims of uh, uh, Rollercoaster Tycoon 1, you know, Chris Sawyer would come here once a year and pray as he was coding the whole of Rollercoaster Tycoon 1 in assembly by hand on his own. Chris Sawyer is insane, I tell you, insane. <laughs> but yeah, they can make the pilgrimage here and then they build the park after the fact. I mean, clearly this is a very old building and Mistletoe Peak, the park pretty modern we just did, we did just build a steel roller coaster which was a bit beyond medieval architectural techniques or is it you know who am i to say you know they they, they, they tell us a lot of things don't in school don't they like these they even tell us that the earth is round and you know i feel like everyone on this channel is pretty smart right we all know that that's a lie so who know who can who is really say who can really say to be sure uh, either way we are there isn't I'm, I'm not very good at talking about buildings like this because it's so simplistic and you can kind of see what's happening on screen. So I feel like I can't really talk about many things that meaningfully because it's kind of... I've run out of ideas of things to talk about, basically. I've talked about the muse for this building. I've talked about nothing else, actually. I kind of rambled and bought some time, but it's all right. We're getting there. We're getting there. We can make it, guys. Don't worry. How long have we got left in this video? We've already got like... Oh, we got about six... So we've got 10 minutes to go, so we've got some time, but obviously someone, there is going to be some time dedicated to the POV of the ride, but again, Mistletoe Castle, maybe Mistletoe, Mon Mistletoe Monastery, I was about to say, can you guys suggest a name for this place, but I think Mistletoe Monastery, or Mistletoe Mount, I've kind of circled back to what this, this, uh, this topic originally was, and I've forgotten what I've talked about so far, so uh, yeah, how was your guys' day? Yeah, <laughs> we get to this old chest again where I completely run out of ideas. I make no effort to try and disguise that, and I just very painfully and cringeworthy just try and stumble my way through the rest of the commentary and hope that nobody notices that I'm completely incompetent at this. But whatever, it is what it is. This is what this is. <laughs> but yeah, like in the U I, I, I guess this might be a UK thing because the US is too like young of a country. I say UK thing, I mean UK in the sense that I guess most of my audience is UK or US based. Um, I don't think it is actually, but just in terms of English speaking countries, I guess. Um, America's a bit young to have buildings like this commonly, but in the UK, there's loads of really old buildings like this. Usually, they're like a, a, these days, it seems that the National Trust is affiliated with all of them. So you can go and visit some stately homes for the day. Like um, I was in a place called Heligan just a few weeks ago, which is like another old house, I guess. <laughs> it's actually more garden, so it's not a great example. But yeah, so I, I kind of went to a lot of these growing up, like you just had day out at some National Trust stately home. Interesting places to go to, kind of. It's, it's weird going to really old houses because what they do is they basically restore them or just leave them untouched. So going in, it's like literally walking through a, a portal in time. And, uh, you know, just seeing all the old furnitures and stuff, it has that kind of old smell. I don't know how to, how else to put on, <laughs> how else to describe it. You're just like, wow, it's, it's so weird thinking this is how like, people used to live, you know? Where are the Wi-Fi routers? What do you mean there's no Wi-Fi? I say that. I mean, like, I remember we didn't, I didn't remember, I remember when we first got Wi-Fi. I remember when Wi-Fi first came out. I think I was like 13 or 14. No, I was older than that. I remember I was in like college when Wi-Fi was a thing. I wanted to say to my friend, because at the time we both had Nintendo Wii's and we wanted to play each other online. He says, you need something called Wi-Fi or wireless? And he was like, oh, we haven't got that. Like, I haven't got that either. We just got it. It's not where you plug it into the wall. And now that seems weird to think about that we had that conversation. Like, what is Wi-Fi? What is this new technology? that Now well, now I was just expected to get this thing called Wi-Fi. And obviously now it's so commonplace. You know, if you go to a coffee shop and they don't have Wi-Fi, it's like, what? Well, come on, you're living in the past, mate. Come on, get keep up with the times. <laughs> so, yeah, that was kind of a quaint little thing. So maybe, you know, my house could well be, you know, one day. This is where famous YouTuber Matt Lown lived. 
<laughs> uh, yeah cries as i see my like i don't consider myself everyone says like oh what's it like being famous like if you think i'm famous then your bar for someone being famous is incredibly low i mean like although in my defense people always said that like you know well how would what would it take for you to consider yourself to be famous i'm like well i guess if i got recognized on the street by someone i would then consider myself to be famous but now i had that has happened to me and I, I still don't really feel like i'm famous and i feel like most of you guys probably agree with me that i'm just i feel like youtubers and actual famous people are two very different people until you're like making mainstream news so what would be the threshold let's let's hash this out right now guys let's decide how many subscribers do you need in order to just be famous famous rather than just youtube famous i reckon it's got to be a million right um i mean when total biscuit died it's obviously very sad he was reported on by like bbc news and stuff so at that point i would consider him to be a famous person he had a very big channel though still has i mean you know the total biscuits channel is still very big maybe like i'd say it's i'd say it has to be a million right it has to be a million i can't i don't see how could just be me i don't know i haven't really given it much thought to be honest i hope uh, it's certainly not 175,000. i don't know really how many i've got actually let me just check i'm sure i've got 175,000. No, that kind of ballpark anyway this commentary is now going to get outdated very quickly for better or for worse hopefully for hopefully for better then now my sub count is at two million and i actually am a, a real famous person but realistically that's probably not going to be the case because it's the, it's certainly not going to be among planet coaster viewers let's face it but maybe maybe kerbal space Program will suddenly get this really weirdly popular update and it becomes the best selling game of all time one can hope eh? but there you go there's there's the castle the flag is a work in progress although i think i just ended up going with a uh, a union jack in the end or union flag for people that might get mad at me for calling it the union jack when we're not at sea um there you go there's a fact in case you didn't know it's it's only called the union jack when it's being flown at sea i think i think i'm pretty sure i learned this fact on doctor who so citation is needed here but you know it makes sense it, i feel like it'd be weird for them to include that in the script in the script if it wasn't true but uh there you go so there's the um the general castle there we can finish it off by doing some windows here and there and then we need to add a door might be helpful i know we've got doors on the side but i think we need something a bit more grand so i placed all of them on the wall and then just chose one that looked good i went for that really tall one and then we do need some kind of front entrance to it so we've got that big sort of courtyard there so i knocked down some of these walls and placed some stairs and then i thought because I, I wanted it to kind of it's very hard to make those stairs blend in into a normal path that guests can walk on so I thought maybe like it's now considered too un unstable and rough, especially with all the snow around for guests to walk on or, you know, the park's insurance company wouldn't cover them. So they built a path going over the top of the original one. So then it kind of makes sense. And then the path does flow naturally into the actual architecture of the buildings. A, eh? come on. I thought that was, I thought that was a clever idea. It's probably not that. It probably didn't, it didn't really take that much thought and effort, but you know, for the two seconds effort it took to come up with it, I was quite pleased with how it came out. And then what you got to do, like the most awkward part was linking the pathway up to the uh, the cable car station. But again, I think it came out okay. Some people criticise my disabled access entrance as having these uh, steps. But look how shallow these steps are. A wheelchair can make it over those steps. A wheelchair is not completely, you know, I was about to say disabled by any kind of change in elevation. But, you know, a wheelchair, it can get over very small steps, like bumps. Like this, like a curb. Obviously, you have the the, the slopey. I don't know what it's called. You know where the you know like the curb at the edge of a pavement or sidewalk for you Americans. It will kind of go down so a car can drive up the sidewalk onto a driveway. Whatever that bit's called. Uh, that there's still a notable step from the flat surface of the road onto that, and a wheelchair can get up that. I feel like we're getting very hooked on the wheelchair step thing. But, <laughs> but yeah, you go. That's how I justified it. And then I had some sort of viewing platforms here. Eh, look a bit naff. I probably need to fine-tune them at some point. But I think they're good enough. Considering, again, this is only going to be viewed from a distance and guests can't actually access this part of the park. It's only there for aesthetics. Although, that's all a bit of a moot point because guests can't access any point in the park because of the way the paths broke. But regardless, in the fantasy of this being a model park even then guests aren't able to access this park because the uh, the cable cars are out of action speaking of the cable cars by the way everyone pointed out the mistake that i made and i don't really know how i made the mistake that i put the cable on top of the wheels on the lower support when physically that's impossible that it needs to run under the wheels of the support 
Uh, and, it was like, and I was like, oh yeah, don't worry, I'll go back and change it. I probably won't go back and change it though, I'm too lazy. From a distance it looks fine, right? It's fine, don't worry guys, it's fine. This is this is Lown Aerospace, we've solved many, many of the world's problems um, in, 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 our, in our company's history. Uh, I don't know, maybe we just used, we used really strong magnets in the supports for the cable, so it didn't need to be running underneath the guide wheels. And there you go, that's the story. So I didn't actually make a mistake, guys. Because Matt Lamb doesn't make mistakes, okay? There was that one time where I thought I did make a mistake, but I was wrong. So we're fine. <laughs> uh, there we go. There's there's a little shot of the mountain and mistletoe monast... What did we go with? The castle. The castle's got a good ring. We can go with that. And then, I guess, I owe you guys a POV of the roller coaster now. So we'll show it twice. One at the night and one in the daytime. I will, for once, not talk over the rest of the POV. So I will see you in just a second. So yeah, I showed the uh, the nighttime one first because again, uh, as I said earlier, I feel like this park is best appreciated at nighttime. But I can show you the daytime one as well, just because it's a bit easier to see. Just because I'm I'm quite aware that YouTube makes videos look a lot darker in its like incredible uh, compression algorithms. Although let's just call it at nighttime, just in case it's a bit too dark for when when this video is actually on YouTube and looks way worse. <laughs> just in case it's too dark to really make out some of the finer details. Like the little snowmen in the queue. I was really happy. That I think they're. All, I'm pretty sure I didn't get them from the workshop. If I did, I'm sorry. I didn't credit you whoever created them. But I'm pretty sure they're part of like the game as stock. But uh, yeah, I thought they. And I used them a lot. I reused those snowman assets in pretty much all the other queues and rides. But again, uh, just don't look too hard about it, guys. Uh, but there you go. There's a little nice little cinematic shot of the park as we bring on the end screen to the links to the full playlist and a video chosen for you by YouTube's algorithm. Twitter, Patreon, Discord, Instagram. Instagram, trying to grow that, are in the description. Goodbye.